Good morning and welcome to Worship in Zion here in Pierce, Nebraska. I want to welcome everyone to our service this Lord's Day in this time of caution and of uncertainty. I'm sure the number one question on many people's minds is, when are we going to resume uh, worship? Uh, we will be uh, providing that information as soon as we uh, get some things lined out so everybody knows. Uh, also, uh, we just want to remind everyone, if you do not feel comfortable coming out, even when we uh, resume regular worship services again, we will be continuing these uh, YouTube videos. So uh, keep that in mind, and we wish God's blessings uh, on all of you. Uh, we'll begin now with the singing of our opening song. Let us come before God, to whom all hearts are open, 
and from whom no secrets are hid, and confess our sins in the name of him who died and rose again, to give us forgiveness and life. I confess that I have lived as if God did not matter, and as if I mattered most. I have not honored my Lord's name as I should. My worship and prayer have faltered. I have not let his love have its way with me, and my love for others has failed. There are many whom I have hurt, and many whom I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires are soiled with sin. I have sinned against God and against my brothers and sisters. There is no help in me. Except for the promise of Christ, I could not hope for reconciliation and peace. Forgive me, renew me, and lead me, O Lord, so that I may live to your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. First reading for this morning is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 10, beginning at verse 30. And Cornelius said, Four days ago, about this hour, I was praying in my house at the ninth hour, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your alms have been re remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon, a tanner, by the sea. So I sent for you at once, and you have been kind enough to come. Now therefore, we are all here in the presence of God to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that the Lord shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is taken from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. 
and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, which is our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. And no longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you, so that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that you will love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome for the children's message. I'd like to talk to you uh, this morning about something that's really important. I want to talk to you about remembering. Now, what are some of the things that you need to remember? Can you think of anything? I'm sure mom and dad want you to remember to clean your room, and I'm sure your teachers want you to remember to do your schoolwork and so forth. Remembering is really, really important. Now, going back years ago, people used to do certain things to help them to try to remember things. For example, if you can see on my finger here, there's a piece of purple string, isn't there? People would tie a piece of string around their finger, and then when they'd see that, that would tell them that they need to remember to do something. Well, I want to share something else with you this morning, and that is this cross. And if you look at this cross, it has on it a bow. Now, this was given to me by the father of one of our members years and years ago, a man who now is at home with Jesus in heaven. But the, I keep this cross in my office, in my cabinet, uh, so people can see it there. And every time I look at it, I see that, uh, uh, that bow there, it helps me to remember certain things about God. First of all, I remember the, how Jesus died on the cross to take away uh, my sin and your sin and the sin of the entire world. The bow also can remember, remind us to remember to pray and to read God's word. And the bow can also serve to remind us that, uh, that God has blessed us with life in this world and also with a heavenly home where we will be with Jesus someday. So I wanted to share that with you this morning because like I said, there, we, there are many things that we need to remember. But most of all, I want you to remember the precious promises of God, the promises of your Savior who said, I am with you always even unto the end of the age. I want you to remember that Jesus is with you always, that Jesus loves you and cares for you and your family, that Jesus cares for the entire world. That's why he gave his life on the cross, to wash all our sin away. And boys and girls, again, I want you to remember to, to, to pray, and uh, I also want you to remember that, uh, that God is with you always, according to his word and promise. Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Dearest Lord Jesus, 
Help us by the power of your Holy Spirit to always remember your wonderful promises to us. We thank you for your great love for us and being our Savior and coming to this world to take away our sin. Help us to remember to pray, to study your word, and to remember your promises. And again, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the promise, the life that you've given us both in this world and in the world to come. For all the blessings we have by faith and trust in you, help us to remember, Lord, that by faith and trust in you, we have the promise of your peace always. In your holy name we pray. Amen. God bless you.
mercy and peace of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be yours always. In the Savior's precious name we ask it. Amen. My dear Christian friends, the text that we want to use as the basis for the message this Lord's Day is from Acts chapter 10, the first reading uh, that Vicar just shared with us uh, from the lectern, and which centers around two individuals in particular, that being a Roman centurion by the name of Cornelius and the Apostle Peter. But first, I have a question for you. Have you ever thought or believed something to be true, only to find out that you were mistaken or even wrong? I think we've all had that experience at one time or another. For example, last November, when our daughter got married, we had some family uh, come to the wedding from Michigan, never been to Nebraska before, and they had their preconceived notions of what Nebraska was gonna be like, but when they got here, they were just amazed at how beautiful the state is and how wide open the state is. You have to remember that uh, Michigan is a lumbering state for big, so basically any place you don't see a tree, someone cut it down. Where out here in Nebraska, any place you see a tree, someone planted it. It's quite a contrast when you think about it. The other notion about Nebraska is this, is that they thought, like so many people think, is that uh, Nebraska is just flat as a pancake. And that's true if you stay on I-80. But if you get off the interstate and see what the state's really like, you'll find that, of course, there's a lot of different terrain to Nebraska. But really, what really impressed uh, uh, our family from Michigan was they had no idea. They thought that people in the Midwest were friendly. But that's all they could talk about when they, I talked to them after they got home, is that how uh, hospitable the people were here and how friendly they are here in the Midwest. And I think, folks, that speaks well for all of us. I think we've all had that experience where we uh, pictured things as being one way and then we found out through firsthand experience that what we thought or assumed was mistaken or even wrong. And that's true about a lot of things. We always have to remember this, is that there's always more to learn. And the fact is, we live in a time in history where we have access to more information than any other generation. But here's the thing. We also know that just because something's on the internet or it's on the evening news doesn't mean that it's true. We need to work hard to make sure that the information that we uh, that we uh, take into ourselves or that we hear uh, is, in fact, reliable information. And when it comes to what we think and believe about God, we have one reliable source, that being the Bible, God's holy word. Now, when it comes to our understanding about God, it is easy for us to say, well, I think this, or my opinion is that. Is it possible to believe one thing about God and to find out that it isn't true at all? Well, that's what happened to the two individuals mentioned in our lesson from Acts chapter 10 today. The first one was Cornelius, a member of the Roman army, and also, of course, the apostle Peter. Both of them had pictured God as being one way, only to find out that it was very different. It wasn't exactly as they thought. The first person we meet today is a man by the name of Cornelius. Again, he was a centurion. Uh, we're told of the Itali and Italian regiment of the Roman army. A centurion, if you didn't know, is a man who was in charge of 100 men or soldiers. Uh, centurions were always of noble character. The Bible describes Cornelius and his family as God-fearing and devout. Cornelius was the kind of individual who was always donating money to the poor, and he prayed to God regularly. Cornelius was a great guy. He followed the religion of the Jews and lived a good, clean life. In his mind, that's what God wanted. In his mind, that was the way to heaven. That was the way to eternal life. But something was seriously wrong. Something was missing in Cornelius' heart. Something big. And so an angel told Cornelius to find the Apostle Peter. The Apostle Peter comes to Cornelius' house. 
And he shares with him the true way to salvation. Something was missing in the heart of Cornelius. And that something, of course, again, was the Lord Jesus Christ. Cornelius had heard about Jesus before. He'd heard what the people were saying about him how, and the good things they were saying about him. But Cornelius didn't understand that he needed Jesus as his Savior and Lord. The Apostle Peter says to him, You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all? Basically, what Peter was telling Cornelius is that if you're looking for peace, Cornelius, you can only find it in one place. You can only find it in God's Son, our Lord Jesus. And then Peter goes on to say, You know what has happened. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. You see, it was at our Lord's baptism. The heavens were open. The Holy Spirit descended as a dove. And the voice of the Father said this. This is my Son, whom I love. Listen to him. No better advice has ever been given in all of history. And of course, Peter also again says in our text about Jesus, how Jesus went around doing good and healing those who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. All those miracles that our Lord Jesus performed, making the blind to see, the lame walk, even raising the dead, were all intended to show uh, those around him that Jesus was not just a good man and a good teacher. He was the incarnate Son of God, the Savior, the promised Messiah, who had come to redeem all humanity from sin and bring us the gift of life forever. And I'm sure this message of the gospel, this good news, which Cornelius now heard from the first time, for the first time from the Apostle Peter, absolutely blew him away. Remember, he thought the way to heaven, he thought the way to eternal life was through his good works, was through his behavior. Now he learns that he needs a Savior, a Savior that loved him and the entire world so much that he was willing to suffer and die the agony of the cross and rise triumphantly on the third day to bring us life and salvation by faith. I'm sure this good news brought peace to the life of Cornelius and his entire household, a peace that he never experienced before, a peace which surpasses all understanding. And many people today in our world are also looking for genuine, real peace, and especially in the midst of this time of caution and uncertainty in our world today. But folks, remember this, in the midst of all that's going on around us, let's remember if we want real and genuine peace, we can only find it in one place. We can find it only in the Savior who said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. I dare say there is no better fitting words from Scripture to comfort us again in this time of uncertainty and caution. I remember hearing a story about a young man who went to a minister in great distress about his spiritual state. He was like Cornelius. He was a good guy, but he didn't know that he needed a Savior. He went to the minister and said, Sir, can you tell me what I must do to find peace? To which the minister said, I'm sorry, son, you're too late. The young man replied, you, you're even mean to say that I am too late, too late to be saved? To which the minister said, no, but you're too late to do anything. You see, 20 centuries ago, the Lord Jesus Christ, God's own son, the promised the Savior, did it all for you, for me, and for the entire world. Read your Bible. Pray to God, trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you will find the peace that you seek. This good news of the gospel turned the life 
of that Roman soldier named Cornelius around. And it has changed lives over and over and over down through the centuries. I can't imagine what it would be like to live your whole life thinking that your good works were getting you to heaven and then to discover that it had all been done by one, that being the Lord Jesus Christ, God's own Son, through his death on the cross and his glorious resurrection. Folks, that's good news for you, for me, and for the entire world, that Jesus has done it all. Now this whole situation, which we've just talked about, also turned the Apostle Peter's life upside down as well. Because in verse 34 of our text today, Peter says this, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. Peter, like many of the apostles, all the apostles in fact, came from Jewish backgrounds. They thought that God loved the Jewish people more than he loved anyone else. Jesus himself affirmed the fact that that just isn't true. John 3.16, for example, where the Savior himself says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And now Peter sees with his own eyes that God loves all people, regardless of their background, regardless of their nationality. And God wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth and to find their peace in the Savior himself. In Acts chapter 16, we're told, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. My dear Christian friends, there's so many people out there, just like Cornelius, nice people, people that strive to do the good things in their lives, people that think that that is the way to heaven. But the Bible makes it so very, very clear, clear that there's only one way to heaven. That is by faith and trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his blood shed on the cross, his glorious resurrection, which is proof that he overcame sin, death, and hell for you, for me, and for the entire world. God sent Peter. God sent Peter to a Roman centurion by the name of Cornelius uh, to show him the true way to heaven but also to bring to Cornelius words of peace, true peace, lasting peace. And it is my prayer for you also that you would find your peace this day and every day of your life in the Savior Jesus Christ who loved you and gave his life for you so that you would have life in him both now and for eternity. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all our understanding keep your hearts and minds in a living faith and a life everlasting. And may God be with you and bless you and grant you his peace. Amen.
We bow our heads in prayer. We rejoice in you, O Lord, and bring you our praises. Your mercies are new every morning. Daily, you put a new song in our hearts. Everywhere we look, we see evidence of your love and faithfulness. We stand in holy awe as we consider your wonderful works of creation. One of the greatest of your works, O Lord, is the creation of your church, built upon the apostles and prophets with your Son, Jesus Christ, as the chief cornerstone. We acknowledge the undeserved love you have shown by calling us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light, that we might declare your wonderful works. Once we were not a people, but now we are the people of God, and for this we give you thanks. And yet, O oh Lord, we confess that we have not always lived as your people. As a royal priesthood, we have not always been faithful in making intercessions for others. Without the righteousness of Christ, we certainly do not measure up to being a holy nation. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for not living as people who have obtained your mercy. In spite of our failures, O oh Lord, we take comfort in the promise of your Son, Jesus Christ, that he has prepared a heavenly mansion for those who trust in him as the way, the truth, and the life. Lord Jesus, we remember in our prayers this Lord's Day those hospitalized, especially Chuck Fallhander, who was hospitalized in Norfolk and has now entered hospice care. Also for jo Joanne Strelo, who will undergo surgery in Omaha this week, but will also be returning home this week. And we also continue to pray for Ken Karstens, who was hospitalized and has now returned home. We continue to pray for Greg Schwartz, the brother of Steve Schwartz, and for William Torson, who has stage four cancer. Also, your servants, Marlon Nitz, Gail Brechtschneider, Dan Buckendall, Jake Cox, Sherry Stanachik, Michelle Ronspies, Travis Gardner, Jolene Voss, Pam Halsey, Dave Meinke, Ron Walslager, Todd Clawson, Brenda Hamilton, and Danny Anderson. Be with and bless these your servants, dear Lord. Grant them healing according to your will. Be with their doctors and families. Grant them comfort and the assurance of your abiding presence. We continue to pray for our church, our community, our state, our nation, and the world. In the midst of the virus, we ask you, Lord, to bless all medical personnel that uh, you keep them safe as they treat the sick. Be with the scientists as they work to uh, provide a vaccine and treatment. And we also ask you to be with our political leaders that they may make wise decisions in governing uh, in, in, in this uh, free nation with which you have blessed us. And Lord, we also offer a special prayer this Lord's Day on behalf of Gerald and Susie Walker, who were involved in an auto accident this past Friday, but are now home recovering. We thank you, Lord, for preserving them and uh, the people in the other uh, vehicle from a more serious injury. Bless them, dear Lord, and again, we thank you for the safety and the recovery that you are even now providing. These prayers and whatever we have in our hearts, Heavenly Father, we bring before you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus, as we boldly approach your throne of grace, knowing that we are clothed in the righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for all of your blessings and your abiding presence in our lives, and uh, we thank you for the privilege of coming to you in prayer. We ask for your mercy, your presence, and your peace. In your precious name we pray. Amen. We join together in the prayer that the Savior himself taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.